Welcome back to my channel. And if you are visiting this space for the first time, you are also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the perineal body. The perineal body can also be referred to as the central tendon of the perineum. I've put up a lecture on the perineum. If you've not checked that lecture, oh, please kindly go and do so. Let's try and use this image down here to describe where the perineal body is located. This is the configuration of the perineum. The perineum is the region or the space that is located inferior to the pelvic floor. We've we'll tried to highlight this in our lecture on the perineum. So this is the inferior view of the pelvic cavity, and this presents a diamond-shaped configuration. This diamond-shaped configuration or outline is further subdivided into two triangles. So we have this demarcation created at this point here that is highlighted in blue, which is an imaginary line that runs from one ischia tuberosity to the other. And this is what divides the diamond shape configuration of the perineum into two triangles. So we have a triangle at the front here that is highlighted here in yellow, and this is the urogenital triangle. Right behind, we have another triangle that is highlighted here in green, and this is the ana triangle. In between these two triangles is where we have the perineal body, and this is what is highlighted here in dotted red. This perineal body is a collection point of different muscles that are located around the perineum. So you see different muscles around the perineum contributing to the formation of the perineal body. And this is what is seen to be carried here in black. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the structural configuration of the perineal body and also the functions that it exhibits around that space. So going further, using this image by the side here, this is where we say we have the perineal body that is highlighted here in black. This perineal body is a central mass of fibromuscular tissue that is seen between the urogenital triangle at the front and also the anna triangle behind. This is where we have the urogenital triangle here, hired in yellow, located anteriorly, but posteriorly we have the anna triangle that is arrowed here in green. So in between these two triangles is where we say we have the perineal body. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in dotted red. This perineal body forms a fibrous skeleton of the perineum. And this structure is seen to be tied to the skin. So how does it present this structural orientation? By creating a skeletal framework of the perineum. If you drive deep through the perineal body, we say that it is made up of fibers. These fibers are contributed from the neighboring muscles. So we have a number of muscles around the perineum, which we would be highlighting as we go through with this lecture. So these muscles are seen to contribute their fibers to the formation of this perineal body. And because of this orientation, it's helping to create a structural framework or alignment of the perineum, thereby providing strength and also support for this region. So this is how it is helping to create this alignment around the space because we have the different muscles of the perineum contributing or submitting their fibers to form the perineal body. And this is how this alignment comes together, helping to hold the perineum in place. So generally it is seen to support the perineum. So let's drive further to see the other functions that the perineal body presents around this region. So the perineal body, we say that is a point where we have interlace of the different muscles that are located around the perineum. So you see these muscles submitting or contributing their fibers to form this perineal body. And this region is what is seen to be carried here in black. This region is seen to be thickened because it's a collection site of different fibers of muscles. So what it does, apart from creating a skeletal framework for the perineum, it is seen to also provide support for the pelvic viscerals. We know that this space is a region that is located inferior to the true pelvics. And within the true pelvics, we have a number of structures, which include the urinary bladder, we have the rectum, and also the anacana. Why specifically in female, we have the uterus. The perineal body is seen to contribute to support this structure. So it's helping to hold these structures 
in place. But apart from this, it is also seen to help strengthen the posterior wall of the vagina canal. And it does this through the sphincter erythrovaginalis. The sphincter erythrovaginalis is a subset of the external erythral sphincter. If you look at this image by the side, in the front here is where we have the erogenital triangle. Within the erogenital triangle, we have the erogenital hiatus. This hiatus is created for the urethra and also the vagina canal. So you have a sphincter connecting the urethra and also the vagina canal together. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. This is referred to as the sphincter urethrovaginalis. As I've always said on this channel, all we need to do is to just break down the name. Most times when we break down the name, we already know what the structure entails. So the sphincter erythrovaginalis is the sphincter that helps to connect the urethra with the vagina canal. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. This sphincter erythrovaginalis is a subset of the external urethral sphincter. We know that the external urethral sphincter is seen to surround the urethra and a subset of fibers from this external urethral sphincter is seen to be transformed into the sphincter erythrovaginalis, where it is seen to then hold the urethra and also the vagina canal in place. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. So within the sphincter erythrovaginalis, anteriorly we would be having the urethra, while posteriorly we would be having the vagina canal. At the posterior end of this sphincter erythrovaginalis, you have some of its fibers also contributing to the formation of the perineal body. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in dotted yellow. So you have fibers from the sphincter retrovaginalis also submitting its fibers onto the perineal body. And at this point, you see that it is helping to strengthen the posterior wall of the vaginal canal because the region that we have at the posterior part of the sphincter retrovaginalis is the vagina canal. And at this posterior end, you see it submitting its fibers onto the perineal body. So this orientation that is created around this point is seen to help structurally strengthen the posterior wall of the vagina canal. We'll be dwelling more on this as we go through with this lecture. So this is how it provides this function as it relates to the posterior wall of the vagina canal. It's also seen to help support the anal opening. So let's drive through to see how it establishes this function. If you look at this posterior triangle here at the back, this is what we refer to as the anal triangle. Within the anal triangle, we have the opening of the anal canal. And this is what is seen to be carried here in white. The anal canal is surrounded by the external anal sphincter. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in black. This external anal sphincter is a voluntary sphincter. And you see this sphincter also contributing to the formation of the perineal body. So you see fibers from the external anal sphincter also submitting kind of some of its fibers to the perineal body. And this is what is highlighted here in dotted black. So as it does this, it's helping to support the opening of the anal canal. So this is how this function is also exhibited. So you see that apart from the perineal body helping to provide structural support for the pelvic viscerals, it's also helping to strengthen some of the structures that are located around this region. And it does this because some of the fibers that helps to hold these structures in place also contribute to its formation. So as it creates this alignment with this organ, it's also helping to control or support them. So let's drive further to look at the relations using these two images here by the side. The superior one is the perineum in male, while the inferior one is the perineum in female. In this upper image here, this is where we have the perineal body here, arrowed in dotted green. And in this lower image below, where we have the female perineum, this is where we also have the perineal body here, also arrowed here in dotted green. So in male, in the anterior part, you have the bulb of the penis, this is where you have the bulb of the penis here, herald in blue. The bulb of the penis is the central bulb-like mass that is seen at the root of the penis. So this structure is seen to be positioned anteriorly. But posteriorly, you have the anal opening. And this is the anal opening here that is herald in white. This anal opening is about 1.25 centimeter from the perineal body. So if you take
take the distance from this point where you have the hana opening is about 1.25 centimeter in male. So going down to the female, the structure that you have in the anterior part is different from that of the male because of the peculiarity of the reproductive system. For the female, you have the vagina opening, and this is what is seen to be hard here in pain. And this structure is seen to be anteriorly related to the perineal body. If you go back to the male perineum, the structure that you see in the anterior part of the perineal body is the bulb of the penis. While in the female, you have the opening of the vaginal canal. If you go posteriorly, you have the ana opening also in female, and this is what is seen to be carried here in white. The ana opening in female is also about 1.25 centimeter from the perineal body. And so if you try to take the distance that is carried here in black, you see that from the perineal body down to where you have the final opening, it's about 1.25 centimeters. And it's good for us to be able to establish the structures that are related to the perineal body in both the male and the female. Let's drive to the components of the perineal body. This perineal body, remember when we started this lecture, we said that it is a central mass of muscle fibers that is seen to be formed by the different muscles that are located within the perineum. And it's good that we highlight the structural component of the perineal body. And this is where we'll be establishing the different muscles in the perineum that are seen to contribute their fibers to the formation of the perineal body. In totality, we have 10 structural components of the perineal body. And this is further subdivided into four paired muscles which means that we have a total of eight muscles that are contributed from this paired subset. So we have the first one, we have the deep transverse perineal muscle, we have the superficial transverse perineal muscle, we have the levator ani, and we have the bubble spongiosus. So we have these four muscles, although paired, which means they will be contributing eight of its structural component. And the second subset had the unpaired group, and these are two in number, and this includes the external ana sphincter and also the longitudinal muscle fibers of the ana canal. So these two will be contributing to of the component of the perineal muscle. So if you sum it up in totality, you have 10 muscles that are seen to contribute to the formation of the perineal body. So we are going to be taking each of these subsets one after the other. So I like how they contribute to the formation of the perineal body. So first, let's go through the paired component. The paired component, we say we have four paired components, and this will be contributing eight of the structural components of the perineal body. We have the deep transverse perineal muscles. The deep transverse perineal muscles are two in number. They are paired. We have one on the right and one on the left. Using the male perineum up here at this point is where we have the deep transverse perineal muscle. This deep transverse perineal muscle is located within the deep perineal pouch. So it is located deep in the perineal space. So this is what is seen to be carried here in paint. This muscle is seen to originate from the ischiopubic rami at this lateral hand. And you see the fibers inserted on the perineal body. So it runs in the transverse alignment from the ischiopubic crema and is inserted on the perineal body. The perineal body is what is seen to be elected here in dotted white. And this is the muscle here that is arrowed here at this point. And there are two in number. So as we have one on this side, we also have the other one on the other side. It is deep because it is located within the deep compartment of the perineum, which is specifically the deep perineal pouch. And we'll be highlighting more on this in a subsequent lecture on the deep perineal pouch. So please watch out for this. The next muscle is the superficial transverse perineal muscles. This superficial transverse perineal muscle is just like the deep transverse perineal muscle, and it is located more superficial to the deep transverse perineal muscle. This is what is seen to be highlighted here in green. It is located within the superficial perineal pouch. So if you look at this muscle, you see that it runs from the ischial tuberosity on the lateral side, and you see the fibers inserted on the perineal body. So it runs transversely and is directed towards the perineal body from where it emerges from. You also have two of this muscle. You have one on this side, and you have another one on the other side, just as we have the deep transverse perineal muscle. So this is what is seen here. The only difference is that the deep transverse perineal muscle is located in the deep perineal pouch, 
why the superficial transverse perineal muscle is located within the superficial perineal part. And this is understandable because it is a superficial subset. It should be located more superficial to the dip. And this is what is seen to be high radial in green. The female perineum in this inferior part, because this structure that is shown in the female perineum is the superficial perineal pouch. We are not able to highlight the deep transverse perineal muscle in this image because it is located deep and it is not seen in this image. So we have the superficial perineal muscle here, also arrowed here in green. We say it is superficially placed and it is located within the superficial perineal pouch. And this is what is exposed here in this image. And that is why we can visualize it in this image that is projected down here. So you see it emerging from the ischial tuberosity on this lateral end and running transversely to be inserted on the perineal body. So this is the superficial transverse perineal muscle shown here in the female perineum. The next muscle is the levator ani muscle. The levator ani muscle is a group of muscles that is seen to form the floor of the pelvic cavity. And if you look at this image up here in the male perineum, this is where we have the levator ani muscle here, harrowed in black. The levator ani muscle, we also have two. We have one on the right and we have another one on the left. You also see fibers from the levator ani muscle also being inserted on the perineal body. So they also contribute to the formation of the perineal body. If you go to the inferior image here, which is the female perineum, this is where we have the levator ani muscle, also arrowed here in black. You see as these fibers run, you see that they are also being inserted on the perineal body. So they also contribute to the formation of the perineal body. And the last muscle is the bubble sponge nosus muscle. The bubble sponge nosal muscle is the muscle that is seen to align or cover up the bulb of the penis. If you look at this image up here, this is where we say we have the bulb of the penis. Remember when we try to highlight the relations of the perineal body, we say that anteriorly in male, it is related to the bulb of the penis. The bulb of the penis is not exposed. It is padded up or covered up by a muscle that is also referred to as the bubble sponge nozzle. So this bubble sponge nozzle is what is saying to be carried here. So you see two of these muscles, you have one on this side and you also have another one on the other side. And you see that they are joined along the midline raffle. So you see that the bulb of the penis has an anterior relation of the perineal body. It's also seen to be covered up by strands of muscle. And this muscle is what is referred to as the bubble sponge nozzle. So this is also one of the structure contributing to the formation of the perineal body. And if you see how this alignment run, you see that the fibers run covering the bulb of the penis and are also being inserted on the perineal body at this region. So they also contribute to the formation of the perineal body. If you go to the inferior image, which is the female perineum, this is where we have the bubble sponge nozzles. These bubble sponge nozzles it's also seen to form this alignment around the vestibule. The vestibule is the opening that is created within the urogenital triangle. This vestibule on this lateral hand, where we have the labial minora, is where you have the bubble sponge nozzles in female. And you have one on this side, also have one on the other side. Because of this opening that is created at this central part, is why the bubble sponge nozzles in female is seen to be spread a bit wider apart than when compared to in the male that is more closer. So you have the bubble sponge nozzles also at this region here that is arrowed. You have one on this side and you also have another one on the other side. And you see fibers from these muscles also contributing their fibers onto the perineal body. And this is where they also contribute to its formation. So you see that in totality, so you have eight muscles contributing to the formation of the perineal body. So let's drive further to see the remaining two muscles that we now form the total of 10 muscles seen to contribute to the perineal body. So the two unpaired muscles will include external anus sphincter. This is where we have the external anus sphincter here in the upper image. The external anus sphincter is a sphincter that is seen to form the alignment around the opening of the anacana. And this is what is seen in this image. And if you look at how these fibers run, you see that at this point, they're also contributing to the formation of the perineal body, which is this region here that is highlighted here in dotted white. If you go to the inferior image here, this is also where we have the external anus sphincter. So you have one, you know, surrounding the opening of the anacana. And as this muscle runs through this orientation, you also see that they submit their fibers onto the perineal body. So they also contribute to the formation 
of the perennial body. And the next muscle that we have is the longitudinal muscle of the anacana. The wall of the anacana is seen to have longitudinal strands of fibers. These fibers are also seen to contribute to the formation of the perineal body because they are found to be inserted onto the perineal body. If you use this hopper image here, this is where we have the longitudinal muscle of the anna canal that is hard at this point. It is deep and it is hidden. So it is not seen as the external anna sphincter because it is deeply embedded within the wall of the anna canal. But its fibers are seen to be inserted onto the perineal body. In this lower image, this is where we have the longitudinal muscle fibers of the anacana also within this image. So it is located deep. It is not as exposed as the external anus sphincter. So those are the two muscles that we see to now complete the total of 10 the same to form the perineal body. And it's good that we've tried to highlight how they run and also how they contribute to the formation of the perineal body. It's also good for us to add that in females specifically, we have a sphincteric muscle that is also seen to contribute to the formation of the perineal body. We have the sphincter erythrovaginalis. This sphincter erythrovaginalis is a subset of the external urethral sphincter. If you try to use this image by the side here, this is where we have the urethra here, arrowed in black. And we know that the urethra is surrounded by the external urethral sphincter. And this is what is highlighted here in green. Behind the urethra, we have the vagina canal, which is also seen to be carried here in black. So we have a subset of the external urethral sphincter, which is referred to as the compressor urethral muscle. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in purple. This compressor urethral muscle is seen to run along the anterior region of the urethra. And this is what is seen to be presented here in this image. We also have another subset of the external urethral sphincter, which is referred to as a sphincter urethrovaginalis. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in yellow. This sphincter urethrovaginalis, we tried to highlight it in our previous slide when we tried to describe the functions of the perineal body. You see this sphincter urethrovaginalis connecting the urethra with the vagina canal, just as the name implies. And this is what is seen here to be highlighted here in yellow. This sphincter urethrovaginalis, we say that it is a subset of the external urethral sphincter. So you have fibers from the external urethral sphincter that is highlighted here in green, sending some of its fibers to enclose the urethra with the vagina canal. And at this region, it is referred to as the sphincter erythrovaginalis. And this is what is highlighted here in yellow. We say that at the posterior region here, you have the sphincter erythrovaginalis also sending its fibers to contribute to the formation of the perineal body at this region. And this is what is seen to be highlighted here in dotted yellow. So you now see that in female specifically, it's where we have the sphincter erythrovaginalis. This sphincter erythrovaginalis is not seen in male because the male are not seen to have vagina. So you see this sphincter erythrovaginalis, apart from connecting the urethra with the vagina, it is also seen to send some of its fibers at this posterior region onto the perineal body. And this is where it contributes to its formation. So in highlighting the structural component of the perineal body, specifically in female, it is good that the sphincter erythrovaginalis is included. And also to add, if you look at this region where the sphincter retrovaginalis is contributing its fibers into the formation of perineal body, you see that at this point, it is helping to structurally strengthen the posterior wall of the vagina. And this has a clinical application in the episiotomy. I will discuss more on this when we get to our subsequent slide. So going through the applied anatomy, the applied anatomy that I would want to highlight is episiotomy that is also referred to as perineotomy. This is a plant incision in the perineum. It is done during the second stage of labor, and it is the common obstetric operation that tends to occur during this stage of labor. If you look at this image by the side here, you see that the cord is created around the perineum. And this is done during the second stage of labor as we highlighted. If you look at the pattern by which it goes, it can either go along the midline plane, and this is what is seen to be already at this point. So if the incision is created from the posterior wall of the vagina 
And you see the cord directed along the midline plane where we have the perineal body. It is referred to as the midline episiotomy. But when it is done the other way around, along the mediolateral plane, it is referred to as the mediolateral episiotomy. These are the two common planes onto which episiotomy is done. It is planned, and this is to prevent the damage of the surrounding organs. We know that the external anal sphincter is located around this region. We also know that the rectum is also positioned around the space. So if this incision is needed to be done when the need arises, So there are indicators that would call for episiotomy. And when this occurs, it would be done so as to prevent the damage of the surrounding organs. There could also be perineal tear or laceration. This is not a planned incision. It is a spontaneous cut of the vagina canal during labor. And this may lead to the prolapse of the pelvic viscerals, which are the viscerals that are located within the true pelvics. And this include the urinary bladder, the uterus, the ovaries, and also the rectum. Thanks for watching this video. Let's continue to stay glued to this channel.